Today, what, today, the 5th of March 2004, what's, the, what's been going on up here today? Well, it's been quite a significant day. You know, it's, that, it's the proper handover of Motorola system for the joint control room. As you know, this is it's a Tetra system, which is a, a terrestrial trunked uh, radio system. And it's going to bring benefit to all the emergency services in the island, particularly the police, the fire service and the ambulance service. And we are the actual first fully integrated joint control room where the services are working together in one room. So when it doesn't matter what happens, if there's an a emergency call comes through, it will be answered here and then it will be distributed to either of the three services. How long has it been in the planning to get to this stage? The concept was first mooted about five to six years ago but we only signed a contract with Motorola last year, in actual fact here, one year ago. Um, but we're in a brand new building, um, which is putting everybody together. Why does the other man need this? Well, again, it's, it's, we're looking to the future. You know, we've, we've spent over £7 million altogether for this system, with the new building, and to be more efficient for the benefit of the people of the Isle of Man. Tell me a bit about Motorola then, has it worked out, it's pitched for it? Well, we've had an excellent working relationship uh, with Motorola, I, I have to say that. Um, nothing has been too much trouble for them. They've come over, they've worked with our people over here, everything's been supplied on time and we're about to go live on the 5th of April. Good for you, good for business, good for government, I mean this is a... It's, a good, for, it's good for everybody and it will show that all the emergency services can work together because in the UK this is not happening. The ambulance service and the police will work together but the fire service are not joining in. Tell me about Motorola and the involvement and how it all came about please. All right. Well basically as you know Motorola we're one of the leader suppliers of public safety communication systems and we're very very keen in the UK to basically provide communications and one of our most important projects has been the one in the Isle of Man. Why is it one of the most important projects? Because as the minister described, basically it's the first system that integrates all the public safety entities. You have fire, you have ambulance, you have police in one integrated system. Most of other systems in Europe are basically public safety only, police only, with a future plan to integrate the other services. What makes this a very unique system is the control room that you have seen here, plus the ability of communicate with every service that is available in the island which really provides a fantastic service for the community. Have you also therefore used this project to learn and develop your product? Basically we've used this as an opportunity to learn not only in the product side but more in the process. It's been a fantastic learning experience to work together with the team here, with the communications team here to put this together because it's a team effort. There are a number of different companies that have been put together, program managed, you know, and made sure that all this comes together as a one integrated system, not just a radio system, a database system, a com uh, command and control system. It's all together integrated as one fully functional system. Did the online government go to you with their concept or have you worked it together? We, we worked it together. Basically the government had a, an idea of what they wanted to do, a concept, and then we worked together to develop the, the, the architecture of the, the system so that they could have the coverage that required, the, the installation, the sites. So it was really a, a shared uh, effort as far as they're coming with their needs and us bringing the technology together for a solution. So what will the public know about this? Will they feel the benefit of this? Well basically the benefit for, for the public is to be able to call the emergency number basically request a service, be it in an emergency or be it any other event, and be able to get these services dispatched very, very quickly. So for the public, it's very transparent what's happening in the background, the radio system and how all this ties together. For them, is they dial an emergency number, they report a certain event, and they will get the services from police, fire, ambulance, and will all be coordinated. So basically, if it's a fire, you will have the three services. If it's a traffic accident, you will get different services based on the requirements and the ability to coordinate the right number of resources based on the incident. Now you're going for a soft launch on this, aren't you? 
like you could say, just make sure it's all in place? And yes, you, you, that's usually the way you want to do that because uh, you have to train all the operators, you have to train the people, the police officers, the fire people, how to use the system. This is a digital system, high encryption, it allows the, the ability to communicate from the dispatch center to one individual in particular on a private call or the command center with many. So basically the command center can call police, fire ambulance, all of them at the same time and give one message to all of them. Or the ability to communicate to one officer to give a very specific message. So all these people need to be trained, both the people in the field as well as the people here in the command center. Yeah. And the other man is geographically challenging, is it not, for radio communications? It's very hilly. And it's, it's, it's very, very hilly, but it's also one entity where you can also control it. All right? uh, I think that we've done a fantastic job together with the communications department to design an optimal system that provides coverage within, I would say, 99% of the island. The results that we're getting so far is that uh, the communication and the coverage is excellent and very good. And TT week when the motorbike people and mm -hmm. populations up, that will be a, a good test of the system. Absolutely, it's going to be a test for the coverage. It's going to be also a test for the capacity, mm -hmm. because you can imagine it's going to be very active, lots of activities going on at the same time, and all these different entities communicating with each other. Yes. Finally, have you found your communication with the government? Has it been an easy process for you? Uh, how, how's, how does the online government? Uh, it's been an excellent partner. All right. I feel very strong that uh, to make these things happen, you have to have the partnership, all right? and you need to work together. And I think it's been a very easy customer to work with. We've been trying very, very hard to make all of our commitments all right? and deliver what we promise and on time, because we know that together we can be successful. And a sub-last question. Today was an important sort of day, or was it just purely... No, it's, it's, it, it's very, very important. And I think that I've been very closely involved with the project, together with the minister, you know, we signed this contract a year ago in our facility in Berlin, and since then we've been kept in contact, making sure that all this goes smoothly and that we ensure that the system is launched on time on April 5th. Um, let's start at the beginning, really, Robert. Yeah. Um, this project and how it all came yeah. down. Goes back probably five years, uh, back to 98, where we had to replace the existing radio scheme because the present system were reaching the end of their life and we had to introduce new technology. The requirements of the emergency services were ever increasing. And at the same time, there was an initiative uh, launched for true emergency services joint control rooms. And funding was given to various organizations in the UK. We didn't get the funding because this was a UK initiative. However, uh, the government were persuaded that this was something we should be interested in and at least to do a feasibility on. So both of the projects kicked off round about 98, leading to a conclusion in April 2004. And what it is, is a new government radio system for all of government, but particularly the emergency services, which will be the main function of the joint control room and is the heart of the joint control room. What makes this project so special, these two projects so special in world terms? Basically the Alaman will be first, to have a totally integrated communications network for, for government and also the first emergency services joint control room and I'll stress the word joint as opposed to three control rooms in one which has happened on various organisations in the UK. So the Isle of Man will be a world leader in terms of emergency services communications. So take us through the I mean, you haven't got a blueprint for this, so this is a, a something you had to come up with yourself, haven't you? Yeah, I mean, there was certain blueprints for the, the radio scheme because it's a, it's a well-established technology. However, we had to determine what we wanted from the for an Isle of Man emergency services system. So it was our system to meet the requirements of the Isle of Man emergency services, not a system procured and then the other way around. But you're quite right that the emergency services joint control room has been a major problem because there isn't a blueprint for one of these. So any documentation, any feasibility study had to start from a blank piece of paper and work through to the ultimate conclusion. So we've had nobody to go to and say, well, how did you do this or how did you do that? How did you get the three emergency services signed up to the project? 
we started from scratch and we've eventually got there. And getting the services to sign up? Not easy. However, we have had great cooperation from the early days of the feasibility, including not just the three services, but also very importantly, the political support of the various ministers that have been involved and ultimately Tinwald, that they backed us all the way from the feasibility through to the completion. Without that support, we'd never have got the project off the ground. If one service, for example, didn't want to do it, this project couldn't uh, have taken off. But there hasn't been the need to force people to do it. They wanted to do it, which is very important. And they can see the benefits for their service of having the best, and this control room will be the best. Why does this not happen anywhere else? A lot of political problems uh, throughout the UK and Europe where various emergency services organisations don't want to be joined up with other services. There are boundaries, there is protectionism, there is jobs, there are lots of political uh, issues involved with this. We don't have those issues on the Isle of Man, I'm thankful to say. Take us through then uh, the scenario, I and mean, we will put pictures to this, of what happens in the, in the control group. Yeah. Well, for the first time, this control room will be the centre point for all emergency services communications. The operators in there will handle all 999 calls, all urgent radio traffic for any of the services. They won't be a fire service or an ambulance service or a police service taker. They will be handling a call as it comes in. So the call is passed to us by Manx Telecom from a member of the public that they require an emergency service, that call is transferred here and we deal with it. So one operator, one minute could be dealing with an ambulance call, the next minute she could be dealing with a fire call or a police call, or she could be dealing with all three at once. And what particular challenges has this brought into the operation? Recruitment, training, because these are all new people. They're all new to emergency services, I think with the exception of one, who's these people have never worked in emergency services operations. A, we had to find the people in the first place, which wasn't easy. We then had to train them through a very intensive training programme of putting them through fire service training, police service training, ambulance service training, new equipment training, new joined up working procedures training. So they've had a very intense uh, period of training leading up to getting ready to go live on Monday the 19th of April.